um, these are your presets. So a lot like uh, other games, there's there's some initial settings that you can put up, put uh, choose for your character mm -hmm. um, that just kind of get them into like the ballpark of what you want to be, who you want to be, and what you want to change. Oh man! And then once you're in that ballpark, all the other tabs let you dial that in, uh, be exactly who you want to be. It's our our goal with this is to make sure that for anyone that fantasized about bringing themselves to the school yeah. for the very first time, yeah. that they feel like they have the options in order to represent who they are and and essentially bring themselves to Hogwarts or whatever character they want to bring to Hogwarts. Oh my God, and options galore. Uh, do you mind if I try to put myself in here right quick? It's all about you Okay, 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 all right, all right. So, oh, okay, yeah, that's me, that's me. We're here, we're here, that's me right there. All right, so let's, that's the one. We're so, pretty close, but let's like, let's look at, let's look at everything okay, here. Let's you know, go let's over play here. around with some of these options, like really. All right, so what are we looking at with this option over here with the tab? I see face stuff. Yeah, so a lot of the different faces that you saw in the in the previous screen, all those mm -hmm. faces are are choices that you have here. So you can now you're just kind of getting into the details in yeah. your face shape, in your skin color, um, and then because we knew a lot of people going right in are going to want it right away, even yeah. though it's an option later in the game. Yeah, uh, you can collect different types of glasses, put them on later. Uh, we give you some options right up front if you want to have glasses for your character. Oh man! Oh my gosh! Look at the structure of the faces with this. Wow, you guys thought of every guys. I like that. I don't think my face is that skinny, but I think we'll go with that. I think we'll go that route. Uh, and down here is this. Those are your glasses this there. Gla yeah. <laughs> oh, so we started, we could, we could go Harry Potter if we want. Awesome <laughs> job. Oh, man. And this is just some of the options, I'm assuming. Yeah, uh, so through the course the of the game, there's a lot There's a lot of different uh, options that you'll keep unlocking. Okay. So as part of kind of like gear for the character, there's lots of different classes, there's even masks, there's all kinds of things uh, over the course of the game. For... I like how it's all Victorian era though. Yeah, yeah. 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 Very authentic. Such a good call, such a good call. Oh my gosh, all right, so now, oh my, oh, we can go fleek on this one with the hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I spend a lot of time here just like dreaming about my different characters. And oh my gosh, the pony. I, the thing I'm always amazed by whenever I see any aspects of Hogwarts Legacy's character creator is just the texture. And like you even adding the bounce with the hair moving around. Yo, that kind of looks like Hermione a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna just like fret, I'm not fretting. And we can just go, can I go like Tonks purple or green a little bit? Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Yo, this is so cool. Oh, I like that. That is cute. Oh, <laughs> okay, so a uh, little behind the scenes. I used to have this type of hair like way, way, way back. But it was it purple? <laughs> I wanted uh, silver tips, so that was the closest I got to any color. But oh my gosh, this is so cool. So you literally can bring yourself. Like it's, it's a myriad of textures and different hairstyles here. All right, so now we're getting over here to uh, play around with some of the... These are more subtle options. Okay. We've got freckles, moles, um, different things like uh, when it comes to your complexion, like darker eyes, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. like some shading on the cheeks. Oh, man. You guys literally thought of it <laughs> with this. Yeah, I do have a bit of fun with that. And then the scars are, are one of those options where, um, you know, Harry had his own unique star, yeah. scar, but you can come in with Yours. different scar options. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Look at that. I didn't even see that. Oh, those are my favorite, the, the, the eyebrow scars. Yeah, yeah. Love those, love yeah. those. You look kind <laughs> it's of a like, classic. Yeah, you look kind of just like tough. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so now we're over here. Oh man, this, you guys, this is so sick. Again, getting more subtle here, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. really like dialing in that face to, to <laughs> really get, get, get yeah. your... I don't know how uh, revealing like I want to be with my facial uh, features now, just like, yeah, I kind of have a big face. <laughs> yeah, my eyebrows kind of sit kind of low. <laughs> but I mean, literally, you have so many options just starting the game. 
I feel like I'm going to be here like forever. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> and then this this final tab here, this is where you kind of bring your whole character together. You know, this is where you finalize everything. You're not choosing your house here. Okay. That's not yet. That uh, was a theory. <laughs> uh, but but you know, here's where you bring uh, you, you choose voice one or voice two, which is more kind of a masculine or a feminine yes, voice. And then even within I that, changing your pitch, oh, with the, the pitch oh, slider. It's a know. subtle slider, but yeah. but you can hear it. Concerned about. That was quite something. And so you can kind of make out the differences. But yeah, you choose which kind of voice that you want. Uh, you'll be selecting your difficulty here. For today, we'll just go normal because okay. Andrew's going to be uh, taking us through some of the experiences with combat later. And we can talk a little more about difficulty, yeah, with, with combat and how that plays in. That but but I think the, the important thing yeah. here is like if, if for people who aren't gamers, especially, right. story mode is a way to get into this without being worried about like, oh, do I need to be good at games? Like, no, just enjoy this game. It's and I will put expecto and then go. Uh, <laughs> we're good, we're good, awesome. All right, Andrew's got some gameplay pulled up for us here. We are uh, starting out, James, there there you are. You're wearing the House Fanatic <laughs> robes uh, from the from the account linking. Thank you, thank you, I, I do look good. Uh, and this is our first look at the Hufflepuff common room, I'm assuming. I mean, the, dorm room. The dorm room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is awesome. But Alan, what are, we, what are we seeing right here with the UI? Because this is our first look. Yeah, so um, right now we know there's been a lot of questions about, uh, about, about the HUD because this is the first time we're showing it. So um, kind of going over from right to left, on the bottom right is what we call our spell diamond. Mm -hmm. So those are, everything that you see in it are slottable spells. So we have over 20 slottable spells that you can earn over the course of the game. Okay, okay. And, and that's where the player can place them and use them and access them very quickly. Um, to the top left of that is you'll see the D-pad and on the left is an eyeball and on the right is a bit of a grid. So uh, the eyeball is an example of one of, not a slottable spell, but what we call an essential spell. Um, there are certain spells that are used in very specific contexts or, um, or that we just want on the controller at all mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And Ravelo is one of those. That's okay. left on the D-pad. On the right on the D-pad is that grid represents where you might slot spells. And so okay. right now, today, we're not gonna be going into the spell slotting menu because we feel like there's a lot of spoilers there. You know, <laughs> like what are all the spells and what I, can we do? I would like spoilers, but I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do wanna make sure there's still some goodies left to share with mm -hmm. everyone. And then uh, on the left side, that thing that has the L1 button next to it, uh -huh. that's another thing where we don't want to spoil, but basically that's where you access your tool wheel. So there's a lot of magical tools that you're gonna be uh, kind of brewing and growing over the course of the game. <laughs> and so that's where you would access them rapidly is our tool wheel. Okay, cool. Um, there are a few things that I left off the table on the right. Uh, the green bar is your health and basically there's a potion next to it. That's how you might heal mm -hmm. the bar above it. We're keeping a secret for now. I apologize. <laughs> and uh, all the way on the left is our mini map with a kind of overhead view of where you are currently yeah. in your common room that updates as you travel through um, Hogwarts and beyond out into the world. And for those those fans out there that aren't a huge fan of mini maps because we know they exist, there's also options to remove the mini map oh, and cool. turn on or off different elements cool. okay. of our HUD. But really that, immerse yourself. Yeah. In, in, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we'll go more into the spells as we get into combat, but that's kind of that's that's what you're seeing there. And this is our HUD. Also, Andrew's giving us a, a good look over here. I want to I want to call out. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of the bedside tables in the dormitories. Um, <laughs> Very nice bedside tables. They are nice bedside tables. Yeah. <laughs> the honey colored wood was mentioned in the writing. It's part of lore. It's part of lore. There we go. All right. So now we're walking out into. We, we really tried making these low ceilinged dorms to give you that badger set yeah. <laughs> sort of feel. And the first thing I know is the music. The score is amazing with this. Gorgeous. And, and I'm calling out here, uh, th this is unique music that you're hearing for the Hufflepuff common room. Go back to those common room videos we released, you'll notice the music's a little bit different, and that is entirely intentional. We just wanted to welcome you to your common room in every single house, just <laughs> a little bit differently. You can customize that experience right away. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Look at that. So, I mean, beautiful design. I, I, we could spend like the entire rest of the stream just in the common room here yeah. and talking about it. And I'm sure Boston and James could be like just <laughs> geeking out over this. All, oh, the, this all, all the details come from J.K. Rowling's writings for this common room. The round doors, the 
hanging vines, even the dancing badgers on the <laughs> it's fireplace. Kind of, it's kind of real earthy vines. Yeah. It's very, very earthy. Which is which is like elements for each of the houses, yeah, right? Hufflepuff like, is earth, Ravenclaw's air, Gryffindor is fire, and Slytherin is water. And we wow. really, really leaned into that for each common room. Wow. So if it feels earthy, we've got a little earthen passageway. That's that's what we were hopefully it should feel very familiar. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. But I, I know you don't want to leave, but we're gonna be leaving. Thank you. I understand. Whoa, the sound effects though. Like looking back at the past trailers, it was just music, but kind of hearing how Hogwarts is now, it's so cool. It's tactile. <laughs> yeah. Andrew's gonna make use of one of our spells, Revelio. Use Revelio right here, because there's a little magic going on. You notice a little something there. <laughs> yeah. So um, these are something that we kind of interchangeably call Revelio pages or lore pages. And you'll notice a bunch of things pop up on the screen. Yeah. You see that we got XP. some XP for it. Mm -hmm. And you can also see that we've advanced something called like a field guide challenge okay. up in okay. the corner. A little oh. glimpse of the grand staircase yeah. here. We're not gonna... <laughs> Circular staircase. All, all the portraits. The yeah. And I did notice the flu flame just ignite right there, which was so cool. Yeah. Oh, man. Fast travel points there. House hour glasses. We had to. <laughs> I, I, how much fun was it designing those and putting all oh, those in gorgeous, there? But, but that they're there just like in the books. Yes. Right it's next to the to Great Hall. Lore. It's a nod no. to lore. House points is not a core mechanic or system in the game. Yeah, we it is we didn't turn it into like a, a gameplay system, but it's definitely present throughout our narrative. And and there are lots of choices where we want to nod to things that aren't don't aren't necessarily gameplay systems, but yeah. but we nod to them as as part of the narrative. Over to the right part of there, the Andrew world. was teasing. That's the uh, great, great hall over yeah. through those doors. Again, we're not going there. We're, he's just kind of like, ah, ah. No. Cool, cool. Uh, here's another collectible page. You know, just again, showing you like just these things around Hogwarts that you can oh, do man. and pick up and that's a shot straight from the trailer, too. Just that part right there. I, I recognize that. I might be giving you a little fan service here with uh, with callbacks to those. So, um, and, and this must be summertime, because I know these are the summertime windows. These windows will change with the seasons. Yeah, the detail they put in this is kind of, I get surprised by it all the time. Oh, it's <laughs> a sentient that was a magic thing. castle. So. <laughs> oh, man. And we're going out. Look at that. This is where the students would normally kind of congregate, just to kind of chill out, play, meet each other outside of the Great Hall before and after meals. And I, I, I love the way that when the castle interconnects to, uh, that it interconnects outside, inside, there, there are pathways on both sides of things. So you really get a sense of scope yeah. to, to how big this castle and, is. And when you see things, like you'll, you'll notice a bridge over there, that's a place you can go to and cross. Like yeah. everything is, everything that you see is a place that you can visit. Wow. We tried so, we put a lot of effort in making it feel really alive. Um, not just with student population, but even just the greenery and stuff, it's Scotland. Yeah. And this castle's been here for hundreds of years. So just kind of <laughs> the moss yeah. and all the trees that have overgrown it. And oh my gosh. That landscape, that this Scottish. This location might look a little familiar to you. Um, I thought I recognized it. I believe this is from the spring ASMR. And yes, so that puzzle right there, that view, uh, Andrew is taking us right back to I'm that. I'm going to tell Andrew not to interact <laughs> with that puzzle and to keep moving on. No. We can't spoil everything. We can't give you everything, right? Hogwarts so. contains a lot of secrets. <laughs> I love that. that. I each love direction, that. you know, it's green over there, so the greenhouse is over there. Transfiguration courtyard, you know, library straight ahead. So it's kind of a the hub oh my of God. a lot of the castle. Even the color visually, you could just tell, okay, green, oh, green greenhouse. That way. Light, oh my god. I should a lot of it'll be subconscious, but yeah. it, it'll help you really feel learn the castle and mm -hmm. feel like you know your way around. <laughs> that's that's not to say that it's easy to learn. All of us here still get pretty lost in it, it on a daily a basis. It it's a me. castle. It's a... <laughs> Great point. <laughs> I love that Andrew's uh, definitely teasing a lot of things here. I'm noticing he's swinging the camera this way and that. Is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's got this grin on his face over there that's just like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. That statue is from about. the reveal trailer. That, that dragon. It's oh, my gosh. This is another location where the students oh, will great. gather, um, you know, and just kind of chill out. And, and an opportunity uh, to uh, talk to somebody, get a get a yeah. quest giver here. Is everything all right? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm Nelly, by the way. 
I'm just so excited that the Dedalian keys are back. The what keys? The Dedalian keys. Surely you've seen them flying about. Rumour is that a former headmistress, Professor Moll, conjured them to protect the contents of certain locked cabinets years ago. Professor Black couldn't be bothered to disenchant the keys, and they appear every few years. You should try to catch one. Why would I do that? Each key will lead you to a locked cabinet somewhere in the castle. If you can manage to get the key into the cabinet lock, not an easy task, you may find a reward. Perhaps I'll give it a go. I hope you do. In fact, I think I heard one of the keys in the astronomy tower. You should listen for them. Uh, different interactions with different characters uh, can also offer different choice points for the player. And then some of those things uh, can, can affect things game-wide. Some of these affect characters' lives, uh, the ending of the game. Um, and sometimes it's just about you being a little bit of a nice guy or just hand. being a jerk. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so sure. the scale really varies, but, but, uh, but those opportunities exist for the player. Wow, look at this. This is the Dada Defense Against the Dark Arts. Power. <laughs> Power, which uh, th this is one of my favorite locations in in the castle. Just visually, you come in here and just the the richness of it this is area very is very iconic, very unique to anywhere else in the castle. Somebody else that we can talk to, uh, notably a, a younger student. Yeah, um, she looks like a first year or an eleven year old. Are you all right? Don't you know who I am, Zenobia Noak, the girl whom everyone at school hates for no reason. Everyone hates you. Why? Because Hogwarts is full of bullies and spoil sports. Leander Pruitt's one of the worst, that no talent moon mind. I wanted to make some new friends, and so I brought my collection down to the common room. My gobstone collection, that is. I was hoping someone would want to play. Are you familiar with gobstones? Little balls, like marbles. Grand game. And if you lose, they spray you with a foul smelling liquid. I haven't much interest in a game that sprays you with odors. Only if you lose, which I never do. Or at least, not often. <sighs> People can be so cruel. Just because they're sprayed all over with smelly gobstone spit, it's their own fault for losing. Imelda is one of the worst losers. Ever written a story or a terrible as well. And now those poor losers have taken my gobstones and hidden them in very high places all over the school. Sounds as if you caused the smelly situation, and they responded accordingly. I didn't make the rules. Anyway, I can't work out how to get them back on my own. I don't think I know the necessary spells yet. I need someone, perhaps a selfless and talented fifth year, to help me. I'll see what I can do. I'd appreciate the help. If you do find all of my gobstones, do come and see me again. I'll be back to playing Snake Pit and Jackstone by myself in no time. I, I love that interaction with her because there's so many ways that you can go with that. You can like, <laughs> you can feel for her, you can be a jerk to her, you can be like, gobstone sounds awful, it sounds like you're just mean. Like, uh, Yeah, and, and your opportunities to be mean there aren't over. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so they continue. That, that's but a good example of the... Gob, gobstones, too. I know people are going to ask, gobstones, uh, gobstones playable? They, may, may, they mentioned it, right? Yeah, um, so yeah, uh, gobstones is one of the things that is not playable in the game. Um, I know we've we've had to rip the band-aid off on a few things. I honestly, the, it's both an it's an amazing thing on the franchise how many things about this like like speak to us as fans and that we want to turn into gameplay. And and there were calls that we had to make over the course of production of kind of like which things we will and won't include in the bucket, Gobstones, just kind of for the overall wizards the chess. Yeah. Those are things Those that aren't featured. Aren't featured. Yeah. They're featured but, within the world. Right? I'm glad they're mentioned. They're a part of the wizarding world. Yeah. Yeah. Every single time there was something that we, we, re we regretted because we couldn't include it. We also tried to figure out a way to make sure that it was included in the narrative, mm. included in the stories, mm. make sure that there's a way to kind of like acknowledge it, touch it, you know, and, and make it feel like it's definitely part of the world. And I know here too. <laughs> I, we're, I we're like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 
We're in the Fist Against the Dark Arts class. I recognize that staircase to the left where we were just at, Andrew was walking by. I also recognize the dragon at the very top. Oh my gosh. Being in a classroom, I think this is a good opportunity to talk about how classes work, because we've gotten a lot of questions about that. Is it mm. a schedule-based system? Is mm. it to, to tell us how classes work? Yeah, so um, ultimately you decided not to go the sim route. So I think like one of the speculations was, is there time of day? and you know, that kind of thing. Like, can I miss class at this yeah. time of day? There is kind of a day-night cycle. Yeah, yeah there is a day-night cycle, but uh, but everything is very um, narrative-based. And so there's a big mystery going on in the world. There's something happening in the narrative, and we, and we essentially see it as kind of like chapters in that narrative, each chapter of which has a set of missions that you can choose between as you're progressing through the game, and classes fit within that structure. Mm -hmm. So there are mainline things that the players have to do, and then classes also appear on the sides as well as optional things that help you advance your spells. It's absolutely true that classes provide all of your major tools throughout the gameplay, your spells, your major abilities. You get to know the professors. Each one of them has these bespoke uh, kind of events yeah, and moments yeah, in those missions. Yeah. And then there are also additional opportunities outside of that through kind of like side classroom missions, essentially, where you can learn additional spells or things that you need in your adventure and also get to know the professors better. And but, I just want to call out something that, that Andrew's been kind of showing off, uh, ways to kind of interact with the environment and just, just uh, engage with the world. And, you know, maybe down there he's sipping some tea yeah. with the... Uh, <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Victorian I so. high, you know. Yeah. Well, high society. High society. Yeah. 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 I just don't wonder you like this area because we built it for, like, the purebloods <laughs> and the Slytherins. Oh, and... come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, speaking of lived in, like, the sound effects, again, the chatter of the communication that's happening and the footsteps, like, it just makes it feel more alive. Little events like that, the brooms going <laughs> by just overhead. Saw a broom go by. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. The data tower was one example, but um, no two hallways should look the same in Hogwarts. It's a, it, it has a lot of personality. Every hallway should be a little bit different, and that's mostly to help orient the players, right, uh, right. help you not get lost. Right. But uh, uh, this is Hesperus Hall. That's a little nod from the Marauders, a name that came from the right. Mar Marauders map. But every hallway will have a little bit of a different personality and personality. I like that because yeah. it, it gives it does like Hogwarts has character. Hogwarts is its own character. No matter where you go, yeah. feels just a little bit different. Yeah, it's sentient castle full of magic for hundreds of years. Yeah. It's going to kind of and grow and develop. Of, uh, oh, I heard something. Uh, yeah. Speaking of characters, speaking of magic, <laughs> Mr. Magic himself. <laughs> My future poltergeist for two. You know, we talked about building on lore too. I know there's that statue over to the side. Oh, yeah. That's Do you know who that is? Lachlan the Lanky. Yeah. And he's yeah. got his, his bow truckle friend. And, <laughs> and I think if players don't know, there's another well, Revelio sorry. page there. Yeah, yeah. there's a, a map of Argyleshire. We know the fat lady hides it's there. She hides behind it. That's right. Well, the third, third book. <laughs> but sometimes a, a hallway has personality by how it looks. Or we just passed a music hallway where the portraits have kind of taken it over. And um, so the sound makes it really unique. All right, I got to call this out here. I know there's been some criticism in the past that uh, our trailers and our gameplay and what we've shown so far has not had enough owls. OK, <laughs> so here we are. At the Owlry, we're looking directly at the Owlry to show you all of the owls. It's a Every, lot of owls. It's a lot of owls at the Owlry. I love all the, the owls. fog rolling down that Great way. callback. Great call. But, no, I, also, I also love that as I, I, one of my favorite things about just kind of going around on the outside of the school is that all those things that I see are places that I can go to, mm. that I can visit. I just love that sensation That's knowing so that cool. that is real. That lovely Scottish countryside. <laughs> We're uh, kind of closing out our, our mini tour of Hogwarts. And again, it was, a, it was but a fraction of uh, this enormous castle. Uh, <laughs> but we're closing it out here in the clock tower. So another recognizable location. Yeah. But this is where Crossed Wands, which is the secret, not so secret dueling club is uh, that the students have put together. Professors definitely know about it, but they think they're being clever. Uh, and it's run by this uh, Luke and Brattleby here. Who's in a younger year, but we kind of like that this, yeah, that he's running things. Hello, Lucan. May I use the training dummy? Of course. I'll fetch it and give you a list of combinations to practice. Ready to have a try now? That would be wonderful. Be sure to cast all of your spells before the dummy lands. If you need to stop practicing before you finish all of them, 
Let me know. And this is a really good opportunity to now jump into combat because really in the game, this is going to be uh, the first time where you yourself get to learn about combat and combos in a big way and in a new way. Uh, for me personally, this was where the game like really starts to open up to the possibilities. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we've set up a we've set up a training dummy, and this is kind of an activity where you're supposed to execute according to kind of the iconography on the top. Now, uh, what we see on the top is the Accio spell, followed by four what we just kind of lovingly refer to as basic shots. Um, <laughs> uh, there are certain spells what the wizards kind of like use, just kind of fling. Andrew's using one now, and you trigger that by tapping R2 on your controller. So you mm -hmm. can see in the corner R2. So if you tap R2, that throws out a basic shot. But that R2 is also your gateway to all of the, the uh, spells that you might slot. So if you okay. hold R2 instead, you can see how the diamond expands. And if we let go, you see how it contracts. Yeah. And so if you hold it again, it expands. And so when it expands and all the spells that you slotted while you're holding that button can now be tapped with your face buttons. Awesome. And not only that, but over the course of the game, you can gain um, additional spell diamonds, up to four additional ones, so that you can slot up to 16 spells, you know, pretty much instantly. And then that helped us um, fulfill the fantasy of in combat, I need to be able to access things very rapidly. Yeah. And and so you learn over the course of these events, you know, how to juggle not just the spell casting, but also it reinforces um, an understanding of another feature of the wheel, which is their cooldowns. Mm -hmm. So as you're casting spells, just to make sure that you're not just kind of like repeatedly using one thing over and over and right, over again, right. you can see cooldowns on the spells that he's using uh, on the wheel. And then as you progress through the game, there are different things that can affect things like cooldowns through your talents, uh, different things that okay. allow you to kind of like okay. juggle and adjust and, and wow. update those things. And so if you hold down our R2 and you tap the D-pad, it will switch between your other diamonds if you've unlocked them. And, and that's how you access all those. Oh, man. It looks like we're about to get some action over here. Yeah. So this is, this is a great way to kind of learn how to pull things together, um, so you pull those combos right together. Yeah. Tap, Accio, tap, tap, tap. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Andrew. <laughs> and that's just against the dummy, but I mean... Uh... I'd say that's enough practice. You looked good out there. Thank you, Lucan. I say better to discover one's weaknesses during practice than during a duel. You'll be a fearsome challenger now. I think now we can, uh, we can take on something a little more challenging. It's going to shoot back. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about uh, some more features of the combat system. Hello, Lucan. Is the next round of Crossed Wands all set? Why, yes it is. I've got a great match lined up. Ready for another round? We're on a PS5 dev kit here, so we're going to be able to kind of pause, the, <laughs> pause the action yeah, yeah. and talk about what you're seeing on the screen, because uh, there is about to be a lot going on. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. All right, here you can select uh, if you want to fight with somebody else, some of One your of classmates. Yeah, yeah. But in this case, we're not. We want we want that action to feel a little more frantic <laughs> towards you to really get you that sense of of uh, of combat. So apparently you've uh, got quite the reputation because they've got you up against yeah, three people. Three, yeah, Apologies off the boss. jump. <laughs> Um, so I can I can explain this uh, just because I know people are going to go into it, but we can probably just kind of jump in. Um, so uh, you're not the only one that has Protego and the ability to deflect. The enemies do too. And we actually play with that when it comes to the spell casting. So you notice that there are different colored kind of shields yeah. around the different characters. And you also notice that your spells have different colors on them. So to help players understand kind of like the function of their spells, we're yeah. going to put them into brackets. So there are damage spells, there are force spells, there are, um, I'm forgetting the other one, all of a sudden, control spells. Mm -hmm. And so those things for the player, uh -huh. they wind up also being a color indicator for which which actual spell to use to break the different shields that uh, enemies can use. That's that awesome. way it rewards kind of like that close right. attention that right. you're paying, paying on things. We've got this paused here now, and you can kind of see all the elements on the screen, the, the halo around the avatar's head, yeah. each of the different shields uh, to kind of give us a, give us a breakdown yeah, of what's going on. Give us a breakdown of different things that you're saying. <laughs> um, so you notice at the top uh, that we're, we're kind of like calling out which enemy you currently have targeted yeah. and their level and health. And so, you know, as you target different characters, you'll be able to get that breakdown. Yeah. The, uh, 
the halo over your head, whenever an enemy is about to an, an attack, it's, it's almost like you have a little bit of a sixth sense for those things that are coming. <laughs> um, if you see the halo, it means there's an incoming attack. And if you tap the triangle button by default, mm -hmm. then that you will be able to deflect that attack that comes in oh. and off with yeah. the protector. And okay. I love that yeah. deflect where it goes off and, and like hits things yeah. up yeah. and kind of breaks things off walls too. <laughs> but also uh, if you hold the button, then it doesn't just it doesn't just deflect, it also deflects and turns around with a counter attack stupefy that actually stuns the enemy. And you can use that even in your combos and stuff. So yeah. if you're focused on a character, you know, and you're you're doing your thing, yes. and someone else attacks you, you can actually turn that attack into a direct attack on the person that you're comboing. Back into into gameplay here, Andrew's gonna pretty pretty handily finish these these other students off here, win this duel. Look how fast it is. It's like a dance. <laughs> yeah, we really felt like the, um, we really felt like in the movies, there's almost like a, uh, it's kind of like a, there, there's call. this element of kind of like fencing from a very great yeah, distance. Yeah, that's and, such a good call. And there are a lot of, uh, a lot of things that we had to do with, with our controls and combat system in order to kind of Arnold capitalize on that idea that's pretty unique to the Wizarding World. Yes. <laughs> well, perhaps you should try that next time. The other duelists have already taken notice of you, but after that last round, they'll really have it in for you. You'd better keep practicing if you want a chance of winning, or at least surviving the next round. I'll let you know when we're ready. Hope to see you then. The next round is for all the gobstones, so to speak. And that is more or less going to wrap it up for us for now, for what we wanted to show you. No. Character creator, <laughs> tour of Hogwarts, and uh, just that, that little taste of combat. Uh, but we, we didn't want to leave you without well, maybe a little taste of something that, that we're, uh, we may show in the future, may show next time. Uh, you know, so leaving the castle, uh, going out here. Um... More, more owls uh, confirmed. <laughs> owl mail. Oh, th there's the owlry again. Yes, <laughs> all of the owls. Uh, but yeah, just heading out here again to show you like from Hogwarts to the world beyond Hogwarts. And oh, man. The, this is not somewhere where we're going today, but uh, we'll, we will definitely be taking you in the future. Oh my God. A little glimpse at the, the scale of the castle back there. <laughs>